hope you are fine and doing well today the topic of discussion is experimental or interventional analytical studies randomized controlled clinical trials and quasi experimental study designs are the experimental studies and they are the analytical studies here in interventional or experimental studies intervention or some action is involved and two groups are required for this study study group and a control group for example a deliberate application of a drug in the experimental group which is the study group and in the control group control group is that where no intervention is given later the outcome of the experiment is compared in both the groups it differs from the observational analytical study designs in that here the experiment is directly under the control of the investigator whereas in the observational analytical studies the investigator takes no action just observes there are three key components of an experimental study design pre post test design a treatment group and a control group and random assignment of the study participants a pre post test design requires a collection of data on study participants level of performance before the intervention is given that is the pre test and that you collect the same data on similar participant after the intervention was given that is the post test this design is the best way to be ensure that the intervention had a casual effect so this is the sketch of the experimental study design you select the sample from the targeted population and then random assign the selected population in the two groups one for intervention and one for no intervention suppose counseling is your intervention for some disease then you conduct the pre test you assess the knowledge of that group before the intervention and then to one group you provide the counseling that is your intervention and to the other group not provide the counseling after providing the counseling of the intervention group you conduct the post test from both of the groups at the same time and you can compare the results of these two groups so to get the true effects of the program or intervention it is necessary to have both a treatment group and a control group as the name suggest the treatment group receives the intervention while the control group does not receive intervention it is also important that both the treatment group and control group are of adequate size to be able to determine whether an effect took place or not while the size of the sample ought to be determined by specific scientific methods a general rule of thumb is that each group ought to have at least 30 participants it is also important to make sure that the both treatment group and control group are statistically similar no two groups will ever be exactly like the best way to ensure that two groups are comparable is by randomly assigning the participants into the treatment group and control group such random allocation ensures that any difference between the treatment group and control group is due to chance alone and not by selection bias so to make the population group similar we perform some statistical tests and generate the p value all the p values are statistically non significant which means that the characteristics of the two groups are comparable in terms of their correct socio economic status or their general characteristics like age gender race or ethnic group and clinical picture etc this is important in a clinical trial because unless the two groups are comparable you cannot compare the outcomes in the two groups if the two groups are not comparable then your study will be called comparing apples with oranges
Randomization is the heart of the clinical trial as every individual has an equal chance of being selected into either study group or control group from the reference population. Randomized control trials are considered as the gold standard for performing the interventions and for testing the interventions on the community. The aim of the experimental study design is to provide scientific proof of the etiological factor, that is the risk factors. There are three main types of experimental study designs. Clinical trials are randomized control trials with patients as unit of study. Field trials are community intervention studies with healthy people as unit of study and community trial with entire community as unit of study. The disadvantage of interventional or experimental study design is that bias can occur in this study while selection of the case groups and control groups. Selection bias can occur. The next type of study design, experimental study design is the quasi-experimental study design. In a quasi-experimental study, one characteristic of a true experiment is missing either randomization or the use of a separate control group. A quasi-experimental study, however, always includes the manipulation of an independent variable, which is the intervention. So one of the most common quasi-experimental designs uses two groups, one of which serves as control group. Both groups are observed before as well as after the intervention to test if the intervention has made any difference. So the disadvantages of quasi-experimental study design is that one characteristic of two experiments is missing and manipulation of an dependent variable can be done. There are five phases of clinical trials. First is preclinical phase. Drug is developed and evaluated in cells and animals to see its potential effect on human body. Then the other is phase 1 trial. These trials are conducted to determine recommended dose, side effects and manner in which drug is preceded, preceded by body. Here just 10 to 20 healthy volunteers are recruited. Phase 2 trials. These are controlled clinical studies conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of the drug or treatment to a longer group of people, that is 100 to 300, to see if it is effective. These trials further evaluate its safety and determine the common short-term side effects and risks. Phase 3 trials These trials are used as a basis for regulatory approval of a new drug or device or for a new indication for a market product. These are expanded controlled and uncontrolled trials after preliminary evidence suggesting effectiveness of the drug has been obtained. The study drug or treatment is given to large groups of people from 1000 to 3000 to confirm its effectiveness, monitor side effect, compare it to commonly used treatments and collect information that will allow the drug or treatment to be used safely. These trials are intended to gather additional information to evaluate the overall benefit or risk relationship of the drug and provide adequate basis for physician prescription. The last is a phase 4 trial. This includes post-marketing studies to Gather the additional information including the drug's risk, benefits, optimal use, and long-term side effects. While conducting the randomized control trials, these terms are most commonly used. Post-marketing surveillance, post-marketing clinical trials, intent to treat analysis. Let's see what are these. Post-marketing surveillance involve observational studies such as case reports, cohort studies or case control studies. Its purpose is to assess drug safety under the conditions of use in general practice as opposed to the conditions under which they were tested in phase 3 trials.
post marketing clinical trials here uncontrolled clinical trials are designed to gain more experience with efficacy and safety of the drugs and promote use of the drugs or devices it also includes controlled clinical trials designed to obtain regulatory approval for a new indication intent to treat analysis in clinical trials once a patient is randomized to a particular group he or she will always be analyzed in that particular group for example a study on coronary artery disease comparing the outcome that is mortality between patients who receive medical therapy versus surgical therapy a patient who is randomized to the medical therapy group will be analyzed in this group if during the trial he has an acute myocardial infarction and subsequently undergoes surgery he will not be considered in surgery group despite the fact that he has undergone surgical treatment so this is called intent to treat analysis and consent form is necessary in clinical trials or randomized control trials since these studies involve human subjects hence there are always ethical issues which cannot be overlooked approval from ethical review board is mandatory consent forms are always required and are scrutinized in detail by the ethical review board so it's about the analytical study designs that are randomized control trials and quasi experimental studies in upcoming session i will discuss about the blinding in detail so if you are new on this channel subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates stay blessed